Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and welcome to the Game Exposed podcast. If you guys have a brief question on a narcissist and you want to submit it and have your question answered on the podcast, submit a brief question, you guys, no more than a paragraph because it won't be read. Um, text your questions to 917 636 1109 and text me your questions, and I'll try to get to as many questions as I can and answer them on the podcast, but please make it brief, no more than a paragraph, okay? 917-636-1109. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and today I'm going to talk about the five biggest ways a covert narcissist is vindictive. And this is why covert narcissists, we say, are dangerous, all right? They're one of the most dangerous narcissists to deal with. Why? Because they don't show their hand. But I'm going to go through the five biggest ways they could try to hurt you or be vindictive. The most well-known way, the first way, is the smear campaign. And everybody talks about this. When a narcissist can't hurt you directly... They try to hurt you behind your back by the smear campaign. They're going to go on social media. They're going to say that you're a liar. They may call you a cheater. They're going to say you have mental issues. They're going to try to ruin your reputation. And especially, let's say, if you're going through a divorce, they're going to try to smear you across the board. They'll go to court. They'll try to smear you to the judge. So one of the biggest ways, you know, a covert narcissist is vindictive is to hurt your reputation and do the smear campaign. And also by doing the smear campaign, what they want to do is they want to get all these other people against you. They want to look like the victim and make you out to be the bad guy. That is their ultimate goal. They also try to appear that they were empathetic to you, to other people, um, you know, that they were they had heart for you or they'll they'll sit there and they'll say they did so much for you and you were unappreciative and they again their whole goal is to make you out to be the bad guy and to put all that shame onto you moving along the second biggest way a covert narcissist could be vindictive is by their coldness or being un you know unaffectionate nobody kills you with coldness more than a covert narcissist Covert narcissists are dismissive. This is a huge red flag you're dealing with a covert narcissist is they will dismiss you. They won't acknowledge what you're saying. They will ignore your calls and texts. When you're in their presence, presence, they'll make like you don't even exist. When you're around other people, they'll be nice to other people and cold to you. That's because they want to push it in your face, and make you feel small. They want to give you a complex. They want you to feel like there's something wrong with you. So covert narcissists love to have that attitude that they are you know, above you. A lot of them are snobs. They have a snobby attitude or an air about them that they're better than you. So what, what, what does a snob do? What does a covert narcissist do to you know, try to make you feel inferior? They dismiss you, okay? They'll turn their face when you're talking. They may cut you off in the middle of a sentence and start talking about themselves, all right? They, they want to make you feel like, you know, you're nothing to them. They're the greatest thing that ever walked the earth. And, you know, what you say or what you do is unimportant, And if you ever tell a covert narcissist, like any great accomplishments or something like that, they'll do one of two things. They'll either say, oh, that's great. And then they'll change the topic. Or what they'll do is, again, they will just like, they'll sit there and they won't say much. Okay. They don't want to acknowledge your accomplishments. They're very, very jealous. If they do give you a compliment or praise you when you bring up that you're doing well, let's say in your career or something, it's for other people's benefit. Maybe there's other people there and they're trying to portray to other people that, you know, they're in your corner. They're the, they're the most complete fake phony people you will ever meet. They are not transparent. So the biggest ways that they will be vindictive is to smear you, kill you with coldness, 
A lot of times they'll make promises that they don't keep. They'll say, oh, yeah, we'll get together this weekend. And then they disappear all weekend. Or again, they're unaffectionate when you're with them. They'll, you know, they might not put their arm around you. They don't like to cuddle. They want you to feel like, you know, alone. They they don't want to get too close. They don't want to, you know... They don't, the only time a covert narcissist will get close with you is in the very beginning when they're trying to earn your trust, trying to win you over. But once they've got you, then they feel they don't have to show affection and they don't like to publicly show affection, show affection because a lot of times a covert narcissist is scouting out when they're out with you. A lot of times when a covert narcissist goes out, they like to appear that they're single. That's why they may walk ahead of you. That's why when you sit down at a restaurant, they sit away from you. They don't want to appear that they're with you. All right. So the way they're vindictive is to freeze you out and make you feel like, you know, you're nothing. And the other reason that they're cold too, you guys, is because they want you begging. So they feel by not showing you attention or not being cold to you, you're going to beg more for their attention. So they'll get more and more of you like calling them, texting them, you know, looking to talk to them by them withdrawing. All right. So it's a control tactic as well. Another way that another big way, okay, moving along that a covert narcissist is vindictive is they bring other people into things. They triangulate. So what they'll do is they'll say, yeah, even your mother says you're crazy or even your best friend thinks you have, you know, insecurity issues. See, a covert narcissist works in numbers. They gang up. They get other people in their corner. This is why they kill outsiders with kindness, so that they have these people in their pocket to come back at you and gang up on you, all right? So they use these other people against you to make, again, it's all to tear you down, tear down your self-esteem you know, make you feel inferior. So they'll use other people and say, well, even so-and-so thinks you're, you know, you're negative or even so-and-so thinks you make a big deal out of everything. Okay. Or you're controlling or you're insecure or anything like that. So they feel there's power. If more people, they bring more people into it, it will make you, you know, doubt yourself and it'll bring down your self-worth. All right. So another way, besides the smear campaign, coldness, triangulation, when a narcissist is trying to be vindictive is they call the authorities, okay? Or they could take you to court. When a narcissist really has it in for you, okay, they could call the authorities, let's say, you know, something like they could call CPS on you and say, you're not taking care of your kids. They can call the authorities on you. Maybe if let's just say you're driving without a license, I'm just throwing that out there. If they know anything about you that you can get in trouble with the law, they're going to throw it out there and get you in trouble. So everything that a covert narcissist tries to do is either passive aggressive or behind your back. This is how they fight. They fight behind your back to try to get back at you. Very rarely will a covert narcissist fight you directly and get in your face. That's only if you have their back against the wall. So they do it every way possible you know, in a passive aggressive way. All right. Now, another way that the covert narcissist is vindictive is they isolate and they divide. Covert narcissists are not menders. They're not people that bring other people together and you'll see them in families. They divide families. When you have a broken family, you can rest assured it's because there's a covert narcissist there that's dividing the family. Why do they do that? Because they want to be the center. That gives them the control. They don't want you aligning with other members, let's say, in the family. And, you know, they don't ever want you two to gang up on them and, and go against them. So they don't bring people together. They divide people. Okay. So this is how they can be very, very vindictive by isolating you to family get togethers, by talking about you to other family members. And again, they try to do it from a point of concern, which is 
very false and fictitious. It's not authentic. They're not concerned about you, but they never want to look like they're directly attacking you. They do it in an indirect way. Like they'll say something like, oh, you know, so-and-so, you know, she, she really, she really has anger issues. You know, she really needs, I'm really concerned about her. She really needs to talk to somebody. Okay. It's not that they're concerned about you. It's because what they're doing is they're throwing you in the mud and making you look like you have mental issues and it will leave an impact and a scar to the point where these other people are not going to look at you the same way. When you talk, they're not going to take you seriously. Why? Because that covert narcissist discredited your mental state. They love to use the mental card to discredit you. What better way to discredit you than to use the mental card? And this way, nobody will believe a word you fucking say or take you seriously because they think you have issues. Okay? So they love to plant the mental, the mental card on you. Oh, you're bipolar. Oh, you have anger issues. Oh, you're crazy. Oh, you don't get along with anybody. And they, they work behind your back and they manipulate these other people to think the same. Okay. So what does all of this do in the long run? This isolates you. And that brings me to my, my next big point of how a covert narcissist is vindictive. They isolate you, okay? Because they know by isolating you, you're gonna feel alone. You're gonna feel like nobody's in your corner, all right? This is why you should always have a support system. If your support system is not your fr- your family, it could be other people, but you should always have a support system. This is why covert narcissists like to isolate you when you're in a relationship. They'll say, oh, you don't need to go, you know, talk to your family so much, or why are you always calling your mother, or why do you need to visit your family so much? You know, we could do things together. You don't need to always run over there. I'll do things with you. They don't want you to have strength with a support system. So they feel by isolating you, you may become more codependent on them because you need them. You don't have other people. And they'll also try to isolate you from other people, their friends. When covert narcissists have other connections, other people that they deal with, they are not going to want to align you with these other people. They want to isolate you. So they may get together with other friends, other family members, and they don't include you. Maybe they're going to a lunch or something and you find out weeks later they had this lunch and they never invited you. Because they didn't want you to have that, you know, strength of being aligned with anybody else. Because if you got close to other people, then they're afraid that you won't be dependent on them. And also covert narcissists love secrets. So by having us, they love knowing something that you don't know. Okay. So covert narcissist will isolate you. So you guys, the biggest ways that a covert narcissist is vindictive and trying to get you is they smear you. And, and keep in mind, when they smear you, anybody that believes the covert narcissist was never in your corner, that's when you have to, you know, rethink things and say to yourself, if, they're, if these people don't see me for being a good person, then they're not my people. Then I need to go find new people. The other way that the covert narcissist is vindictive is they're cold and unaffectionate. The other way is by bringing other people and triangulating. Another way that their covert narcissist is vindictive is they call authorities or they take you to court, all right? Always be prepared. When you're dealing with a covert narcissist and divorce, I need to do a podcast on this. You've got to, when you go into that courtroom, you've got to be ready for anything they could throw out at you and they'll throw out everything. They'll make such false allegations They'll say things like you had inappropriate touching with your child, okay? This is how dirty a covert narcissist could be because I knew somebody that went to court and she made false allegations against her ex-husband saying there was inappropriate touching of their children. This is how low down and dirty they get, okay? So you've got to be prepared for anything that they could throw out, but they've got to be able to prove it. And half the time it gets thrown out in court 
because they don't have any proof, all right? They're just talking, you know, whatever they can to try to hurt you and, and smear you to the courts, all right? So, you guys, they, they smear you, they're cold, unaffectionate, they triangulate, they call authorities, they take you to court, try to get you in trouble with the law, and they isolate and divide so that, you know, you feel alone, they don't include you in things, and they, you know, they're dismissive. They're vindictive in the sense that they're dismissive. And you'll see this a lot in corporate America, okay? In other words, you know, the boss always has their favorites. And, you know, if they have it in for you, what they'll do is, like, they'll dismiss your calls. They'll dismiss your your emails. Um, this could be with any kind of, you know, agency. This is very common in government agencies. They're very dismissive. They don't acknowledge or validate you unless you make a whole big stink, all right? This is the problem with a lot of these, you know, agencies that you work with. You have to basically be the, the, the squeaky wheel to get the oil because they dismiss you, all right? They all love to do that and do the amnesia card and say, oh, uh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't get the email. They know exactly what they're doing. What they're doing is they don't want to deal with you, Okay. And I'm just going to throw this other um, couple of ways that a covert narcissist could be vindictive. They could be vindictive by cheating on you as well, okay? When a covert narcissist is mad at you, and I've actually had somebody actually say this to me, where he said, if I wanted to get back at you, all I have to do is cheat on you, okay? So thank you. Thank you for letting me know. See how narcissists tell on themselves? So thank you for giving me the heads up. Now I know what you'll do when, you, when you're mad at me. And that's what they'll do. They'll cheat behind your back. Let's say if you give them resistance or you fight with them over something or you try to hold them accountable, they'll try to get back at you by cheating on you. Um, another way that a covert narcissist can be vindictive is they could rob your money. And this is a big one, all right? And you'll see this with inheritances. When money is stealed in an inheritance, what's going on is there's a covert narcissist in the family manipulating the people with money to, to steal other people's inheritance. And this is what they do, okay? They butter up the person with money. They, they use flattery. They butter them up so that the the family member whose you know, inheritance it is will leave it to them because they manipulated them or they will smear the other members of the family. So again, they aren't left anything. It's all complete, complete manipulation to get what they want, all right? Um, one last thing I want to put in here, how a covert narcissist can be vindictive. Again, if you're going through a divorce or a situation like that, is they could disparage you to the children and they could have, they could create also parental alienation where, you know, because they did so much disparaging and talking poorly of the other parent, the kids, you know, are not going to want to go with the other parent. Okay. So, you know, if anybody disparages you and you're going to court with them or something like that, you could bring that up in court that you're being disparaged by the other parent. Okay. Just FYI on that. But you guys, the big thing it, when you're dealing with a covert narcissist is this, they want to make you feel small. So they're going to do everything again. Remember what I'm telling you. It's always passive aggressive behavior. It's going to be passive. They're not going to show their hand. They're going to do things behind your back. They're going to think of all your vulnerabilities and every which way they can think of to hurt you. Wherever you're vulnerable, let's say you're close with your kids. They're going to try to hurt you with your children. All right. Maybe by talking badly to your children about you, if it's the other parent, they're going to see where your vulnerabilities are. All right. So they're downright dirty. They're downright dirty and they're vindictive. But remember this, no matter what a covert narcissist does, like with regard to the smearing, it doesn't mean anything what they say, because anything they say doesn't mean shit because you're dealing with a toxic person. So you've got to have, you've got to have a strong spine and just say, you know what? Of course, they're going to smear me. This is what they're going to do. They're mad. They're angry. They're trying to get back at me. Smear away. Who gives a shit what you say? Because anything you say doesn't mean shit. Because you are shit. 
okay? And that's your covert narcissist. They're not transparent. They're not straight shooters. They won't fight you directly like an overt or grandiose or malignant narcissist. They'll do it all behind your back, all right? They'll do it all behind your back. So you guys, these are the ways, the biggest ways, you know, the five biggest ways, I listed more, but the five biggest ways a covert narcissist can be vindictive. So I hope that helps you. If it does, hit the subscribe button, share the podcast, um, go follow me on YouTube. You'll get a lot more information on covert narcissists at the Game Exposed podcast on YouTube. And if you want, there's more posts on my Instagram at the game exp123. And have a great day, you guys. If you guys are having a problem in your dating or relationship or you're dealing with somebody maybe that's narcissistic, you don't know if they're a narcissist or you're just having problems, you're in a toxic relationship and you need some clarity on it, go to the link in the podcast description for my website where I offer email and phone coaching. If you have a quick question, just a quick question and you wanna get a video sent back to you answering your question, there's also a link there for Vizio, where I will send you a personalized video answering your question. Hi, you guys, it's Yaz, and I want to tell you about my two books on Amazon. The first book is Regain Your Power. It's all about power and relationship. Who has the power in the relationship? And it goes into all of that, okay? The other book is Signs He's Not Into You, He's Wasting Your Time, okay? Check it out. It gives you a lot of good clues as to whether you're with somebody who's a real one or somebody who's just going to waste your time. You could read them both with Kindle's free trial membership. So check it out. Link is in the podcast description. Hi, you guys. I just want to let you know that the Game Exposed now has their merchandise available. Check out the link in the bio and you could go check it out. There's cool hoodies, cool sweatpants, cool hats. So go to the bio for the link. And also, don't forget to follow me on Facebook at the game exp123 and also on Instagram, the game exp123. Okay, and have a great day. Mm-hmm.